Cole Field House filled to capacity. In fact, the scalpers are getting $1,200 a ticket to see this one. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin, and welcome to College Park, Maryland. You know, tomorrow night they will crown the national champion of college football in Tempe, Arizona. Don't be surprised if both of these two teams, Maryland and Duke, are in the final four in St. Petersburg, Florida, late in March. The Duke Blue Devils, synonymous with winning in the 90s. Five ACC titles, four Final Fours, two national championships. Duke has accomplished in nine years what most programs can only dream of achieving in a lifetime. The Maryland Terrapins. Years of frustration and disappointment have left them without a trip to the Final Four. However, 1999 has brought on sky-high expectations with the emergence of Steve Francis, college basketball's most exciting player. He has electrified the Terps and has brought on promise of erasing past failures. Today, two programs from distinctly different paths begin a season-long battle for supremacy to send a message as to who will be the ACC king to prove that they belong among America's best and most importantly to show that they will be the ones standing come March. Duke and Maryland, the New Year's first epic battle is next. Well, I can't begin to tell you about the noise inside this building. Homefield House has seen some great, spectacular games over the decades, but this one this afternoon, number four against number two, and Dick Vitale, this one they are putting at the very top of the ledger. This would be uh, an asterisk, a big spot in Maryland sports history. Let's talk about what happened last year. Duke came in here, they whipped them by 32 points. You had to say there is a key for Mike Krzyzewski's team today, though. What would it be? Well, I think number one, there's no doubt about it. In a first matchup, they did a great job knocking down threes last year. The bottom line is Langdon will become effective from the three-point line if Elton Brand establishes post position inside. If he can get off like he did against Kentucky early in the game, it stretches the defense. A second factor for Duke, they must make the game a five-on-five -five game. Run when the opportunity is there, but force Maryland to play in a half-court game. Tempo, tempo, tempo is very important. I came over this morning to the early morning shoot around for Maryland. Gary Williams said that last year Langdon shot one from about 24 and hit nothing but net. He said, I knew we were in for a long afternoon. What are the keys for his Terrapins today? Well, Ron, when you take a look right now at Maryland, they have to be concerned with the open three. They must control Avery and Langdon, who have 74 trifectas between them. So containing the perimeter game, I think we'll see Maryland play more man-to-man -man than trapping defensively and play in a trap which leaves open people. A second factor, they must keep Duke off the free throw line. Duke is dynamite on that free throw line. And number three, LaRon Profit must get involved. He was 0 for 7 last year against Duke in a matchup here. He was a non-show against Stanford, had one basket, and did not play well, had only eight points in their loss to Kentucky. The real LaRon Profit must surface today for them to have a chance to win. Well, the house is rocking. We're going to take a break, and when we return, former All-American Lynn Elmore is with us, and he has an interesting story about a young man with the name of uh, Steve Francis. Right back after this. Hottest ticket that College Park, Maryland has seen in a very long time. Third member of our uh, telecast team today uh, has seen some very hot times in this building before. Lynn Elmore is standing by and he's uh, going to take us on a visit with a young man that has made quite a splash on this campus. Lynn? Thanks, Ron. You know, a lot of people think that the road to college basketball stardom is paved with gold. But Steve Francis is not your average local boy makes good story. As we found out yesterday when he went back to the old neighborhood to shoot a few baskets, he toiled in his own field of basketball Boom. dreams. I mean, when I used to play, I always, you know, thought about, you know, um, where it would lead to, where I ever, you know, get a chance to play Division One basketball, where I ever get a chance to fulfill my dream, you know, of playing professional basketball. And, and this is one of the places, I think, you know, that uh, really, you know, helped me keep my, keep my dreams and hopes alive. So I used to come in here all, all the time, just to work out, you know, run up and down the steps, shoot, uh, talk on the phone, play pool, play video games, somewhere just to hang out. And, you know, and I think it made me tough for me to be able to play in, in 
in this type of environment. You see this environment right here, and you just think that how could somebody, you know, think they can do something in, in a gym like this with, with the walls right there? Uh, you, you barely have any place to run. So, I mean, for me to come through something like this, when I when I get out like a cold fair house or something, that's like paradise to me. So I, I just feel that, you know, I, I can do anything when I'm out there. You know, it's good to see a young man who understands from where he's come because he's going to appreciate where he's going that much more. Ron? Okay, Lynn, nice feature. We're going to take a break, as you can see. <laughs> they are ready for this one. Paul Fieldhouse will be right back, starting lineup to the opening tip after this. That these students have been standing outside in the last 48 hours, making sure that they get into this ball game, and we'll talk more about that as you look at the starters for Duke. Avery, Langdon, and Carowell, Battier, and Elton Brand. It is imperative for Brand to continue his physical presence inside and help them out on the backboard. Now, as far as Maryland is concerned, Stokes, Steve Francis, Morris Prophet, and Akizi. And Dick, one of the things that they are concerned about, Akizi has not fouled out of a game this year, but they worry about a physical player like Brand could get him in difficulty. Well, Gary Williams right now is really concerned about that factor because when you look at Akizi early in his career, he's been in foul trouble. However, this year, he's only averaging 2.4 fouls per game. In fact, Maryland, when you look at Maryland, Maryland's situation is they're only committing 17 fouls per game. Mike Krzyzewski, as you look at Mike now, entering his 19th season that do they really rely on getting to the free throw line and they are one of the best run in america shooting better than 75 percent on the line Dick, what about the pace of this ball game uh, maryland wants it to be very quick what maryland, about duke maryland certainly wants to play at an up tempo but so does duke but duke's a little bit more selective i think duke would like and welcome the traps because it leaves people open for the three. I think you're going to see Gary Weavers play more head-to-head, -head, man to man and take away the open threes. The biggest concern, and uh, Steve Francis said it best yesterday, is that, you know, you can't just say it's another game because it's not. But he doesn't want he and his teammates to be too high and do things foolishly for the first five minutes. Because Gary told me this morning that the shoot around. First five minutes of this game is extremely important. Well, you know, last year in the first matchup here when Duke won by 32, as you said earlier, they hit their first four threes, and they were 11 for 17 in the first half and blew that game away where they were plus 20 at halftime. Got to feel like you're at ringside of a heavyweight fight, don't you? Oh, the electricity is amazing. All I know, Ron, I traveled my heart out to get here for this game. <laughs> yes, you did. So Maryland will see them on offense first. Man-to-man -man defense by Duke right out of the gate. Head-to-head -head pressure on the ball. Morris. The putback and the block by Brand, and here comes Duke. Battier at the other end, and he'll score the two on the breakaway. Shane Battier starting time. Look at a steal by Battier. Oh, he had a deflection. Defensive balance so important in that sequence. Maryland did not get back defensively. working against Stokes. And he ain't started because of his defensive presence. He's the most versatile defender Duke has had in the era of Mike Krzyzewski. Stokes picked up the dribble, shoots it off the glass, won't go. Not a more offensive firepower, but a guy that plays on the defensive end and usually controls tempo of game, Terrell Stokes. Carwell dishes it off and Brand will score. That's where Brand is so effective, Ron. He's got the big wide body. He really has got great hands. His hands are unbelievable. He really has a soft, soft feel for the basketball. Profit dishes inside. Francis had it knocked away. Boy, he and Langdon are really banging bodies inside. Morris misses the jam. Not the kind of start Maryland wanted. 0 for 4, you're right. This is just what Gary Williams talked about. Well, because he wants to get the crowd in the game as well, get their energy and feed off that energy. Tough to get excited when you're getting blanked early. Battier misses the three. Not a good long-range shooter, Shane Battier. Profit at the other end. That's a bad sign right there. A little air ball by Laurent Profit. They need a big performance out of Profit. They're going inside the brand right against the keys early. Well, they are banging, and he switches it. 
Six to nothing, just like that, and Gary Williams is up, and he's got to be a little concerned. Well, the one thing is they've negated the perimeter, taken away the three-point shot, but it's allowed them to get the ball to the interior, 101 for Brandt. A easy counter has really improved in the post. Got to give a lot of credit to the big redhead, Bill Walton, the Hall of Famer. Worked with Mr. Akizi on two days and really worked with him as you look at the field goal percentage on his footwork. Langdon. Can flat out shoot the trifecta. That is his 49th of the year. Seven point Duke margin. And we have not played three minutes of this uh, first half as yet. I think he's the best long range shooter in college basketball. Pat Bradley's also great down at. Look at a tip right by Prophet down at Arkansas. That gets the crowd back up, 9-4. to four. Francis with a good look. Avery, heavy traffic, Brand battles for it. Carroll swishes it. Carroll's one of those unsung heroes you have to have, one of those real intangible men. Similar to what Carolina had last year with Okalaja, who's now stepped up to become a number one option down at Carolina. Jump hook won't go. Akizi tries for the rebound, knocked out of bounds by Duke. Maryland right now trying to show passing ability with a little back screen for Profit. There's the good lob by Steve Francis. Explosive Langdon really playing Francis tough. Not letting him get his hands on a basketball. Chris Burgess checks into the lineup. Number 34, the 6'10 sophomore. Gives him size inside. Good rebounder. Look at the officials trying to be a politician. He said, they're holding my shirt. They're holding my shirt. Petty Valentine on the game and Larry Rose and also Mr. Carl Hess. Carl Hess is on the game as well. Hey, we had to help to get Larry Rose in the game here today. If we did. I had to help him at the you, game. You had to tell them who he was. They didn't know who he was. Bridget Langdon, by the way, with the foul at the other end. Shot missed by McGetty. You're going to love McGetty, Ron. He's one of those kids with tremendous speed and quickness. Akizi goes to work on Burgess. It's blocked by Burgess, and he comes away with it. He's got that great size inside. Burgess, Patty A, and Brand give him three players they can rotate four and five slots. That's going to be a travel against McGetty. Now, here's my point. I think McGetty is a, a kid who really is worth watching early because he hasn't played in this kind of hostile environment. Timeout on the floor. 11 to 4, Duke's on top. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look right here why Duke is so effective offensively. They can hurt you on both parts of the floor. Down in the low blocks inside with Elton Brand, an All-American. We watch him establish great post position inside. And then he knows how to finish. He knows how to finalize. A little head fake, soft hands, good touch, nothing but nylon. Now they're going to reverse the basketball and swing it to the open shooter with a nice screen by Brand. And yes, sweet as velvet. NBN, nothing by nylon. Trajan Langdon. Langdon and Brand, one of the great inside-outside combinations in college basketball. You look at the numbers on Brand, 17 points a game, 62%, almost nine rebounds. And for Langdon, he's only taken one shot. He hit it. He's got three rebounds as well. Well, early in the game right now, Langdon's done a really effective defensive job on Francis keeping the ball away from him. You made a great point about Corey McGetty. This is a whole different setting for a young player to get really acclimated to this kind of environment. I think he can handle it. Three on the way, and it's there for Francis. Now, well, this is the guy I think Krzyzewski worries most about as far as igniting this crowd, don't well, you? He's the best talent in America. He may not be the best player in America, the best talent. Battier picks up a foul away from the ball. And there's a difference there, Ron, being a great talent and being a super player. I think eventually when he gets more game experience, people have to understand this is probably his third big marquee game with the Kentucky game, the Stanford game, and this game where kids like Langdon and Emma played in so many big games. The other thing that Francis talked about is the level of competition as he drives the middle too hard off the glass and a foul on Morris. Has really improved. Jared Morris inside. TM's a high riser. Explosive around the goal. Matchup right now. McGetty and Profit experience against the Diaper Dandy. Two point ball game. Illegal screen called against Duke. 
Terrence Morris comes up with the loose ball, knows how to complete the play. He's got that good elevation. Burgess with the foul. That's the third team foul. Now Mike Krzyzewski is up and is staring at Larry Rose about that call. Very difficult to handle Francis one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone else becomes a Kodak man. They want to snap and take pictures and watch him do his thing when he goes over to the point and Stokes goes to the sideline. See right here, one-on-one. -on -one. He's unstoppable in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Has the great crossover, explosive. Larry Brown told me, the coach of the 76ers, he's the best talent he likes out in college basketball. Burgess with the foul. Avery, I beg your pardon. His first and the team fourth as Francis knocks down the free throw. He is a 77% free throw shooter. Amazing story. And Lenny Elmore did a real solid job in the opening in terms of a story on Francis. But what a story. He went at two junior colleges, both went undefeated while he was there as a point guard. Allegheny and San Jacinto. Didn't really play high school basketball. Mom passed away his senior year. He wears a on a tattoo in memory of his mom, touches his shoulder every time he shoots a free throw. And he had academic problems early in his high school career, so not really an experienced basketball player. 7-0 Maryland run since the timeout. Francis and Langley really hook it up on the outside. Avery. Brand goes down. And Akizi comes away with the rebound for Maryland. Nice look. Morris. Avery's been such a key catalyst for this basketball team. Taking over the point guard slot. Graduated Wojciechowski. Wojo now a radio man with Bob Harris. Gary Williams explosive on that sideline. Has such a passion and love for coaching his Terps where he played here. Francis with the foul, it's his first. He wanted to travel just a moment ago when uh, when Elton Brand dribbled across midcourt. He's, he said he carried the ball. Look at Gary, so calm, he's so calm. Coaching basketball is a wacky, wacky way to earn a living, Mr. Franklin. Chris Harrowell, shooting two. Hey, congratulations, Hall of Fame at the University of Mississippi as he misses the free throw. Got to congratulate my partner here. That's a great, great honor. Thank you. You're kind to say so, sir. Those people were kind to offer that. Still tied at 11, just under 15 minutes to play in this first half. If Keezy goes to the bench, he'll get a breather. Danny Miller checks in. He can shoot the ball, Danny Miller. Made some big threes against Stanford when he beat Stanford by a deuce. Beat him in a half-court game. That's what impressed me about Maryland in that situation. Stanford and Mike Montgomery made it a half-court game, and yet they were able to prevail, and Francis had 22 points in that game. Mike Martisich into the lineup as well. He gets the pass and a block and steal by Brand. Adjustment, adjustment by Brand. Landon way downtown. That was touched last by Burgess. He nope. shot, shot that from his hometown of Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> I watch his defensive play. We're going to watch the rotation. There's the good look, good vision by Francis. Now look at this. Oh, he says, hey, Mr. Martisich, give me the basketball. Look at those hands on Mr. Brand. I think he could be some kind of tight end. Puts it on the floor. Going to take Martisich inside. Lost it. Hit underneath the standard, and it's turnover against Duke. The one thing I think Gary Williams has to be happy with is the fact that his club has come back with their defensive effort to narrow the gap to one here early in this game. Four turnovers for Duke early in the game. Two against Maryland. Francis with the crossover working against Trajan Langdon, and he lost it out of bounds for the touch. Langdon last. See, what they're going to have to learn how to do is play when Mr. Francis has the ball in his hands. They have a tendency, the other Maryland players, to become stationary and watch and observe because he likes to really put the ball to the deck. Terrell Stokes to pull the trigger for Maryland. Nick, you know what's interesting in looking at the number? Stokes, does not, he hasn't gone to the free throw line this year. That's in amazing. 14 games it is. That's an amazing staff for a point guard. 
Trying to isolate Morris with his quickness 101. There it is. And he got around Battier and then missed the finger roll. He was the isolation man being played against Shane Battier. Premier defender in the ACC. Carwell working against Miller. Nice look and the block and also the foul. The one good thing about quality teams, Ron, is they always make the extra pass. They play in such an unselfish fashion. That's the part that impresses me over the years, watching the talent that Mike Krzyzewski has put together and watching them play within the team concept, playing as a team. Look at Mike really sitting there very calm, relaxed, stomach churning, mailbox inside. He went to the shoot around yesterday and he just smiled and said, I think this is going to be a good one. <laughs> I'm glad you covered it. I wanted to get to the shoot around. I could. You were circling. Oh, I was circling for an hour up in Atlanta, holding patterns. Then we landed in Macon, Georgia. And I got to thank the Powell family for getting a car from Arkansas, driving me to Atlanta, finally getting on a flight at 940. And it leaves about 12 midnight and arriving here at 2.30. But you know what? I was ready to hitchhike to get here for this game if they didn't have any transportation. Nate James, 79% free throw shooter. He's a young man. Maryland wanted badly from out of here in Maryland. Mr. Basketball said no to the Terps and went out to Duke where he hasn't had a whole lot of play in time. He's had a lot of injuries. Stokes drives, dishes it back, and off the glass. Martisic. They waved the goal call off. The offensive foul. Offensive foul on Martisic. Good look by Stokes. There's the vision. Prototype point guard, always looking to make the pass. Duke rotates over defensively, steps in and takes the tr charge. They chart that, they keep that on their records. How many charges they take. Profit with the foul. Yeah, trying to be the fourth team foul all of a sudden in Maryland. Profit tries to reach from the back. Something they do within their pressure. They try to sneak from behind with deflections. The foul is on number three, Deron Profit, his first, fourth on the team. Both teams with 14 fouls. Avery, nice job as a keys he came over to help. Avery pops it and knocks it down. He has the scores mentality. He gives you a bonus at that point guard slot. Passing ability as well as scoring. Trying to give some help, doubling up on Akizi inside. Stokes drives, had the ball tipped, wanted Martisic, and now the easy hoop at the other end by James. He's got to feel good getting that PT play in time right in his home state. Nate James was a former McDonald's All-American. 22nd timeout called by Maryland. Gary Williams wants to talk it over because of a 7-0 run by Duke. Avery right now spinning, going 101, whirling inside, hanging. Excellent agility to be able to hang and slide and glide. There's the kick out. No defensive balance by Maryland. Gary Williams got to be frustrated about that. It's the second time that's happened with have unmolested layups in transition. Well, I'm, I'm listening to a conversation right here, Ted Valentine. There is a, a fan down here that is sitting right on the floor. We're not going to identify him. That's that's not our job. But uh, he got up and walked on the floor, and Ted Valentine just told the usher. The next time he's out of here. Next time he gets up, that uh, he's out of here. Well, the burden's on the home team to make sure they protect the players, the referees, and to keep that court longer to them as Gary now getting a point. Teddy Valentine listening. Tied at 11 just a moment ago, and then a 7-0 run by Duke. Both these clubs are excellent spurt teams. Well, they're going spurt, 7-zip, 8-zip. Avery got back quickly. Akizi with the turnaround. Too hard up the back iron. Tough shot right there. Fade away, jump shot. Don't give him that opportunity all game. Carowell, he got banged after the shot. Put up an air ball. And it's going to stay with Duke. You're right about that, Ron. No question. He got banged on that arm. <laughs> he can't believe there was no foul. Because what is this, the NFL? He got banged on the mouth as well. Watch wow. it. <laughs> so there's a timeout. 11.55. Left it for halftime. Duke by seven.
point Duke lead. Boomer wow. Esiason, uh, he's not watching football today. Uh, he, he's here watching his wow. alma mater. Now, I know a game he is going to be watching. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ABC Sports presents the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. The College Football National Championship game. Number one, Tennessee against number two, Florida State. Don't miss it. When T. Martin leads the undefeated Volunteers as a battle for that stifling Seminole defense. Tomorrow, ABC Sports at ESPN.com bring you the first ever enhanced TV during the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Don't miss it. Hi, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson with my partner, Bob Greasy. <laughs> we certainly wish nothing but the best to oh, Keith Jackson. Yeah. We should have an award named after him, the Keith Jackson Football Award for academics and character to some football player every year. I agree with you. Avery got the sweet roll there off the front of the iron, and it's a nine point. Since Francis won out, it was a 6-0 run by Duke to show you his importance in this contest. Well, he draws so much attention that he makes everyone else better by his presence on the floor. They get good looks at the basket. In fact, Maryland is scoreless the last three minutes and 28 seconds. When you think about great backcourts in college basketball, I look at that Duke backcourt and it really, really impresses me. Avery has developed to be such a solid point guard and Langdon is just so steady. Avery goes up against Dickeezy and he blocks it. Grand has it taken away and the baseline, Battier picks up the loose ball and scores. Shane Battier, this very tangible man, Battier. working on the glass, comes up with the second loose ball. Harrowell now rotating on Francis. They keep rotating different bodies, trying to get a fresh body to check him. Easy had the big block underneath. Big guy playing tough at both ends of the floor. See, I think the decision here is to let him shoot the long range jumper. That's not a good decision. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you got a choice. You yeah. have up on him and he'll go by you, or let him try to shoot the three. Well, he's got eight points. Because he can be streaky from out on the perimeter shooting the trifecta, but he's so explosive to the goal. 22 to 14. Five second count. Superb defense by Francis on Avery, forces the five second count. For the Terrapins, 44, Terrence Morris for Mike Martin. Look Francis playing on a defensive end. Head on the ball. Look at the emotion. Look at the reaction, yeah. He's very proud of his defensive effort. Francis very high. Akizi tries to come away with a rebound and tipped over by Brand. Knocked out of bounds by Maryland. Morris back in the lineup as Martisich goes back to the bench. When you look at the ACC this year, I really believe that Maryland and Duke stand head and shoulders above everyone else in the conference. And then there's that other section battling for that third slot. Carolina had a nice win yesterday over Clemson. They beat them 45 consecutive times at North Carolina. Is that amazing? Brand, McKeezy banging on him, and he can't get the shot to go. Now they're letting the two big guys go inside. Tipped by Brand, and it causes a turnover. Very little rhythm right now offensively in a half-court game. Very sloppy on that side of the floor. Battier just inside the three-point line and knocks it down. Kid like Battier is going to get some open looks because so much attention is directed to Brand and to Langdon. Moffitt again has got to step up. He was 0 for 7 last year in this matchup in the first game. Had only 8 points against Kentucky. The look inside. Kisses it off the glass. Nice job. Juan Dixon. Dixon. Juan Dixon gives him instant offense off the bench. He's a long-range trifecta man as well. Here come the traps. Francis is called for the foul. Lon, I think the philosophy of going through traps could really come to hurt Maryland. I don't believe you can trap this Duke basketball team for several reasons. They got outstanding shooters, and they really also understand where to be on the floor against traps, and they make open shots. A very difficult team to trap. Steve Francis just picked up his second foul. And it's gotten warm in this building because of the capacity. But you can hear Gary Williams whole face is just soaking wet. He is so into this basketball game. He's like that every game. He treats every game like it's the NCAA championship. Spaghetti, way short. 
Kenny had a super game his last game out. 22 points, 10 rebounds. North Carolina, Greensboro. This is not the same caliber of competition, though. Baxter with the follow. The big fella, the wide body, Baxter, physical presence. He went 10 for 10 in a game against North Texas to break Gary Williams' record where he had 8 for 8. He said, I should have fired my assistant when he got the 7 for 7. I should have taken him out. Morris with the turnaround. And yes. now here comes Maryland back from a 10 to a 4-point game. There's that spurt again we talked about, Ron. Spurt City here, College Park, the place to be. Even Boomer Assassin says we get football this afternoon. I'm going to see the terms of the new level. Well, the great thing is that happened is the weather has just been horrible, and then it got warm, and everybody can come out and see this one. Baxter with that strong body. They feel he's going to get a chance to play a lot more minutes as the season progresses. See, right to the top of the circle. Nobody blocks him out. The left hand, excellent climbing, and the jam. Oh, is there enthusiasm in his house today here at Cold Field House. Number four against number two. It's hard to believe that Maryland has never gotten to the Final Four with all their great teams. Our partner here, Lenny Elmore, played on two super clubs that went to the Final Eight. One year losing to Ernie DiGregorio and that gang, Marvin Batten's Barnes in 73. And then in 75, they went to the Final Eight as well. That was Lucas' combination with Shepard. Maryland just got six points in 49 seconds. Well, Lenny, the greatest the rebound they're ever to play here. So here comes the traps. Wide open people. James. That short, he felt as though he got bumped. The live, and that's a great job by the freshman, McGetty, to get back and save it. And on the inline, it's going to be Duke basketball. McGetty in defensive transition. Worked so hard to get back to step in the passing lane and take away the look to LaRon Profit. Stokes trying to set up his buddy with the lob, but look at McGetty's athletic ability. Well, what about a little bump there knocking him out of bounds? Well, Langdon had to do a little acrobatics there, and nice job by Baxter anticipating the pass. Langdon telegraphed that pass, a Marconi special. Seven turnovers against the Dukies. Morris back to Stokes for three. Gets the wide open look. They don't have great deal of respect for his ability to shoot the three, but he makes them pay. 37% three-point shooter, and he knocked that one down. Here goes the trap. Scramble defensively, spacing so important against the trap. Getty too hard. Brand with the follow. But Getty is rushing everything. He's not playing under control. That's what, that's what we were talking about, though. The first time to come into this kind of environment, you have to learn how you pace yourself and how intensely you can play. Francis. I would take my chances with him and let him shoot the three. I would not allow him to beat me to the goal because you're not going to stop him one-on-one. -on -one. you got to hope and pray that he's missing the long-range jump shot. Ten. Timeout, 6.58. Left in this first half. It is Duke 26 and Maryland 23. It's by three here in the first half, and with me is one of Maryland's greatest players, Joe Smith. And Joe, you've been in these type of intense ball games before. What are your feelings right now? Uh, it's, uh, they'll be all right. Uh, it's, a, it's a good game. Uh, once they settle down, I think, uh, on, on the offensive end, uh, I think they're playing pretty good defense. But once they settle down on the offensive end and start executing their offense, they'll be all right. Are you surprised by Steve Francis' play throughout this year thus far? Uh, when I first heard of him, you know, I really didn't know who he was, but uh, now that I've started watching him and uh, see, see how good of a player he is, yes, I'm very surprised. You know? Well, so sounds like a guy that we knew by the name of Joe Smith. Ron, back to you. Okay, thanks very much. Lonnie Baxter with another block. Morris misses. He shot and look at Juan Dixon's guy, but he had it taken away by Carowell. So far, Maryland's done a phenomenal job negating the three for Duke. Duke's only one for four from the three-point line. Last year, they played for their first nine. Well, not 
exactly what Gary Williams had planned a behind the back pass and a turnover against Maryland. You know, I don't like to harp on this the entire game, but Prophet's got two points, one for four right now. He's had 23 a game in his last three games, but that was against South Carolina State, North, North Texas. He's got to really step up in a big time game. He's too talented a player. Confidence. He's got to believe he can make the big play in these big games. He's got a lot of experience. He's played in a lot of big games. Grant with the turnaround. Unlucky on the shot. Battier on the follow. And he's going to go to the line. I think Baxter is a man who hammered it. The one thing is you want to keep Duke off that free throw line, Ron. They are brilliant. They went to the free throw line in that Kentucky game about 30 times, I believe it was. And they come up usually big on the inside. And to watch the offensive rebound by Battier. Spreads his body. And then he tries to seal off the defense with a little jump hook. Forces the contact. Battier, a 72% free throw shooter. He shoots 75% as a team. Great hand for Baxter and well deserved. Lonnie came in and made some things happen. As Akizi comes back off the bench. Gary reminded me, he said, by the way, when I was 8 for 8, it was against South Carolina when they were in the ACC. He said, Baxter went 10 for 10 against North Texas. <laughs> he said, I should have fired my assistant when he got the 7 for 7. He should have told me so I could have stayed in the record books here at Maryland. Dixon, yep, he's off. Langdon he has it taken away by Akizi, and he'll take it up strong and score. Bill Walton did an amazing job, according to Akizi, working with uh, Bill, a great teacher of post play inside. And worked with him and loved his attitude. Loved I'm starting to say, attitude. he is a great student. He already got a degree in business. Now he's getting a degree in mechanical engineering. Wow. Brand. Nice play inside. The two Super Souths working together. Avery the brand. They go inside to Abino Akizi. Has excellent footwork. Has really worked on his footwork and his agility that created that opportunity. And there's Avery with the inside pass to Brand. Ran so strong, not only physically, but with his hands. That's what makes him so special. Second foul on Battier, five team fouls on Duke. And Dixon is off again, but bad. Let's see, Langan can't save it. We are looking at two of the really blue chip teams in America. And the electricity, enthusiasm. It's so easy to get excited and watch a contest like this. Seeing quality programs, hooking up. Dick Dixon is uh, 0 of 3 from uh, three-point land. Cincinnati must have played a brilliant game. I did not see the entire game up in Alaska. But for them to beat this Duke team, they had to be sensational. Morris, nice quick look, Profit, and it is blocked by Brand. The follow by Morris. Profit hesitated. Brand and Ketcher go right up and uses great jumping ability. Look at the other end. Carolwell takes it strong to the hoop, and I believe Morris... Let's see, any one of three could have been called for the foul. The Meek will not survive here in this contest. As we watch the defensive play inside, look at him attacking the basketball. Duke does an excellent job blocking shots, but Morris stays with it and converts. Terrence Morris is one of those young players that was patient. Didn't come in and become an instant star right out of high school, but he waited. And he has become special, just like a kid Jenna with the Kansas and Gregory, Brendan Haywood at North Carolina. A lot of kids, they need a little time. Right? They can't automatically go to the head of the class right out of high school. So Juan Dixon will go to the bench and get a breather. Maybe return with his shooting eye because they're certainly going to need it. He strokes it 43% from three-point range. But he came up cold in his uh, playing stint early there. Well, they trade offense for defense when they bring him in. Francis, can't teach that, my friends. Can't teach that. But that's a no-no in Duke basketball. That's unacceptable in Duke basketball to allow someone to make the turn and get the baseline. Watch this right here. Nobody rotates over to take the baseline away. And that's a no-no. Can't teach that. Hanging and gliding and sliding. That is big time, my friends. He's looking for people to hug. He's like, come on, give me a stand and oh, baby. McGetty was charged with the foul. And the long term, it comes right back to Maryland. 
Plaffett with the foul. Excellent play by Laurent Plaffett. Gets up on the glass. Good offensive rebound. Francis now has 10 points and four assists. Barely an excellent offensive rebounding team with their explosiveness. The bounce they have in their legs. It's like Morris and Plaffett and Francis. About to go under four minutes left in this first half. And the Terrapins back to within one. And Carowell gets the carom and the follow. Duke can't get that from McGetty. Maryland's done a superb job keeping Langdon away from getting looks at the basket. That's what Cincinnati did. Cincinnati only allowed Langdon seven shots and ran eight in that win. McKeezy wants the ball inside. Going to be Elton Brand. You can blow the whistle on this every possession if you want on a contact that's taking place in that low post. And, and quite frankly, to all three of these officials, they have been very, very lenient. They've let them play. They'll let them play inside. Right there, he's bugging them. He can't let that happen. <laughs> Betty Valentine says, you got to get those paws off his back out there. Francis goes to the sideline trying to protect him. They don't want him to get that third. Well, for anybody who has not seen the play this year and you want to know the difference between this Maryland team and, and last year's Maryland team, the number 23 who just went to the bench for a moment uh, is the catalyst. He makes it happen. He's one of those special impact players who comes in and is such a major factor. Hey, by the way, warburg has got a kid like that and Chris Porter, and they're 13 and zip. They shut the critics down yesterday, beating a good Tennessee team, 90 to 62. First Maryland lead. Oh! Oh, they're going wild, Ron. They're going wild. Leads for the first time in the basketball game, 33 to 32. Don't forget now with the newsstands, ESPN Magazine. Inside, there is a story of this issue of uh, Steve Francis, the uh, the wonder kid here. At oh, Maryland. what's that? And the diaper oh. dandy. <laughs> oh. oh, what was that? Oh. Diaper dandy, where did they get that photo? Tori Kirkpatrick did an in-depth story on Francis. Tony Kornheiser's in the house, and he normally doesn't come out to these games. Writes for ESPN Magazine, has the national radio show, but is a writer out here to watch the post. Outstanding journalist. This is big that he's here. Avery for three. Too deep. Not there. Too deep. Miller's going to be called for the foul as Carraway. Carraway was trying to uh, come away with the basketball, and he fouled him. Len, let's uh, check with you for a quick update. Well, I just listened into the huddle with Gary Williams, and he's telling the Terps they are the best team. It's just a question of every loose ball, every offensive rebound. They've got to continue to play with the effort to prove that they're the best team. Ron? Okay, for Duke, Len, two of their last 11 field goals. Akizi with the rebound here. Langdon's one for three thus far. He only has three opportunities. Dixon. Now that was Battier who blocked it. Let's see if they call the foul on him, and they do. That's three. That's big right there because he's so valuable defensively along that baseline. He can play several players. So that means immediately Chris Burgess, the big sophomore from Irvine, California, will come off the bench. I tell you, Dixon's got a lot of shake and bake to his game. He's an explosive kind of player, really takes the ball to the goal with authority. He also combines it with excellent range as a shooter, has tremendous range. You talked about it earlier, his three-point shooting ability. Forty-three percent. Shane Battier is a winner. Came out of Detroit Country Day, same high school that produced Chris Weber. They talk about the famous dunk by Francis over Weber in the summer league. He got everyone's attention. Dixon playing Langdon now, trying to run him for some screens. Learn to move well without the ball, Trajan. Has the wide open three if they kick it out. Too slow getting it to him. Oh, that shot. Time. Well, did Morris foul him uh, three-point range or was it just inside the line? He was inside the line, and the one thing is you don't want to put him on a foul line. How good is he? 
think about all the great players. Here he is moving out the ball. See now, look at look at Dixon turns his head. He's wide open. He doesn't see Langdon. They should have got him the ball quicker. But he does draw the contact. How good is he on the line? He is right now the leader in the history of the ACC in shooting free throws, 88%. The previous all-time best is Charlie Davis at 87% for career. And he just missed. He's 93% on the season. And he missed the free throw. Do we jinx the kid or what? He's usually automatic on that line. Francis is back in. Dixon goes to the bench. Miller goes back to the bench. I guarantee you he won't miss two in a row, though, Ron. He will miss two in a row. No way in the world. No way. So you put it in the book right now, Ron. Put it in the book. Nothing but court. <laughs> the Alaskan assassin. Oh, boy. Well, he's got one point the last 14-23, Dick. That's big. Maryland's defensive game plan. Keep shots away from him. Burgess. Charged with the foul. Keezy going right to work on him. Take him back quickly. Watching the progress of Keezy from the first time I see him play is absolutely amazing in terms of his improvement, especially his agility inside and the utilization of his footwork down in the post. Smart move go to a camp like a Bill Walton's to learn. Pete Newell does a phenomenal job with his summer camp where he works with big people. You know, this is this is the type of kid that really, as I mentioned, he does have a thirst for knowledge, whether it's in the classroom or with his sport, because he has improved considerably. His free throw shooting is up 6% over that of last year. Still not a great free throw shooter, but a lot better. In today's day and age, there's so many spoiled athletes and really the greed factor to prevails it's so beautiful to see a young guy as you said combine the academics and the athletics but he wasn't spoiled by the system he wasn't a high school all-american he and was a Zyda, kid who came the, here Zyda was the Mr. Olasho that's right the dream got a chance to meet him too he always wanted to meet him and he had that opportunity he bricks the second one but he gets one of two 35-33. Just under three minutes to play until halftime in what has been a very rapid first half here at Cole Field House. Both teams have settled down now with Aaron to a good pattern, both ends of the floor, and a block by Akizi. Tough to take the ball to the inside. Well, Profit is off again. Right now, they got to try to get Langdon to run Dixon into a screen. He keeps turning his head loose and sight of the ball. It's mandatory to see ball and man. And I believe if they're patient, they can get Langdon free for a shot. Brand, nice look to purchase and a block by Akizi. Akizi really dominating in the lane on the defensive end. Becoming a real force on the interior. Baxter with that big body on the screen and give and go and it has it partially blocked by Burgess. Maryland one of the few clubs that can match Duke with that size inside to negate the strength of a brand and a Burgess. Eight turnovers against the Blue Devils. ESPN News coming up at halftime. George Seifert has a new job and also information on Wild Card Sunday. That and more at ESPN News coming up at halftime. Life coach in the NFL. Wow, you talk about a wacky life. Everything is, what have you done for me today? Stokes. Langdon's offense could be affected by the fact of also guarding somebody like Francis Ron. Well, you're right. Wanted a foul on Brand as Carroll at the other end shows his athleticism. Profit, by the way, on that missed shot a while ago. Now two of seven. To back up your point, he's still top of game for They're really struggling offensively. Both these clubs are excellent in taking the ball and converting from the defensive to the offensive end, as we just witnessed with Duke. Francis on the turnaround. Took a bad shot right there, forced the action a little bit. He and Langdon wearing each other out on the defensive end as now Francis playing Langdon. I would try to get a third on Francis. I'd go after him. Avery. 
Love him, Ron. Love William, William Avery. Avery. He's going to become such a special guard. Understands. He's a combination guard. He's not just labeled as a point guard. He can play either guard slot. Avery now with six points. The sophomore out of Augusta, Georgia, averaging 14.9 points a ball game. Block is under six. And Stokes. Unlucky. The one and two. And they got it just before the horn sounded. One and two. Nobody locked down. Baxter with the tip on the inside. Look at the big fella. He's making like a runaway ball. But it's going to lock the road. And when we, came, when we came to Cole Fieldhouse, nobody had any idea that Lonnie Baxter would have this kind of impact on the game. The big, strong presence of Lonnie Baxter. Stokes, they forced Stokes to take an off-balance shot. It almost goes down. And there's the nice tip by Baxter, the conversion. And we're tied at halftime, Mr. Franklin. Last year, it was a 20-point Duke lead. Not this year. Tied at 37. ESPN News is next. Eat the Whopper. That's four. Four. And speaking of exciting basketball action, how about this doubleheader on Tuesday? Tune in to ESPN for another great college basketball doubleheader. Beginning at 7.30 Eastern, number 10, Indiana will take on Michigan. Then Indiana looks to avenge last year's 48-point blowout by the Wolverines, followed by number 6, Kentucky, and South Carolina. We'll try to break a three-game losing streak. Tied at 37, and let's take a break. We'll be back with more from Cole Fieldhouse after this. Jam-packed Cole Field House tied at 37 and just moments ago. Gary Williams and Lynn Elmore had a visit just outside the Maryland locker room. Lynn? Gary, at 8.45 left in the half, uh, Lonnie Baxter gave you guys a big defensive lift and gave you some momentum. Well, he just went in and played. We've been trying to get our inside guys to just go compete because Duke does a great job defensively and on the boards inside. That's what Lonnie gave us. In the last time out before the half, you talked about effort with your guys. Yeah, I'm disappointed that we're not uh, competing better. I mean, we got it back to a tie game, and I thought we really lifted the effort, but we got to do it for 20 minutes. This Any adjustments we need to look to? Well, we got to stop the little penetration they're getting and then that kick-out pass for the easy jump shot. I think they're hurting us with that, and our execution on the offensive end wasn't very good that half early especially. Finally, how do you get LaRon Proffitt started? Well, uh, I think LaRon's a senior. He's been in a lot of these games. He has to understand his time this last 20 minutes, and... If he can turn it on these 20 minutes, we'll be in good shape. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you, Ron. Dick Vitale, I have to say that tied at 37 at halftime, that the momentum has to be with Maryland because of the crowd. But 22 to 11 Duke, and it looked as though you're going to have the same scenarios last year. A tribute to Maryland that they had the poise and confidence to come back. Also, the great job they did defensively. I thought their defensive effort was superb, especially on the perimeter. Take a look at the numbers. They don't lie. Duke is shooting one for five from the trifecta. Last year, they destroyed Maryland twice in games from the perimeter. That one for five is really big, and Gary's got to be really excited about the fact that his club extended defensively on the perimeter and kept Maryland, kept Duke away from really attacking, getting open shots for Langdon. Langdon's been under control big time here in the first half. Lonnie Baxter, who got the tip just as the clock was going out at the end of the first half has hit 13 of his last 15 shots, we're told, by the Maryland Sports Information Department. And this crowd loves the big guy. He did come in. Lynn made a great point. He gave him a big spark. His body is a big, wide body. You need an extra physical presence inside against the likes of people like Burgess and Battier and certainly Brand on the interior. As you look at the two PT peers right here, Francis with 10 points, Langdon with only four. The big story here has been the fact that Langdon's only got three shots. I know when they lost to Cincinnati, Mike Krzyzewski was very upset that Langdon only got seven looks at the basket. He said that's unacceptable at Duke. We can't allow our number one and number two options, Brand and Langdon, to only have a total of 15 shots between them. They have to find a way through screens to get Langdon some good open looks. Four ties in the first half, two lead changes. Duke, as we said, led 22 to 11 after an 11-0 outburst, and Maryland led 35-33, the most that they have been in front. This is a dog fight. This is the way it's supposed to be. The two quality teams going head to head, tied at the half.
Battier, but there's a whistle and a foul away from the ball, and that is going to be against Duke. I believe it might have been Langdon. A little frustration. I believe it was on the leader, the captain. Well, it's on, I think it's on Brand. Oh, it's on Brand second, inside? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's Brand inside trying to post up. Wow. <laughs> he did go after it. Easy. They get help, and the ball tipped away. Morris can't hold on to it. And in the interim, Battier comes down with the basketball for Duke. Got a block outside on Akizi. Trying to take him a little isolation one-on-one. -on -one. He puts the ball to the deck really well, Alton Brand. That's only the first foul on Akizi. As we mentioned, one of the things that Gary Williams was worried about was foul trouble on him, and he picked up none in the first day. Well, early in his career, he would make such silly fouls, just learning how to play. He is now knows what a foul situation is. Look at Battier becoming a little more assertive offensively. Battier. He's going to get open looks. Anytime you got a combination like a line to the brand, you're going to get open looks. Battier with 10 now. He's 4 or 5. They're going to call a blocking foul. I think that may be Battier if it is. That's four. That's four. And look, we're at the 1857 mark. Burgess is off the bench. The one positive, you can go to your bench and bring quality people in. But Battier tries to step out and take the charge. Doesn't get the good established position. He leads them in charge. Charges taken. Last year, he took the most charges on the club. Easy. Profit dishes it. Francis timed his jump nicely against the larger brand and missed it. See, I don't think fatigue's going to play a factor in this game because both clubs go to their bench. They play nine players basically. The ball was tipped by a Keezer. DT Peters love games like this. Oh, this the extra pass. Got to do something with it, and he does. Laurent Profit. Laurent. And they get a profit on the scoreboard. Tied again. Going to set some screens for Langdon. They step out on him. Carwell, nice look to Brand for the easy two. Two-man play on the inside. Brand slides to the open area. Carroll finds the open man. Stokes looked up in a panic. There was nobody back there to take the basketball. So help me, help me. <laughs> the crowd was going berserk. But easy, and that's going to be a foul on Burgess. Getting the ball a little bit inside too easily right now. If I'm Duke, i got to be concerned the way they're bringing the ball inside, and that's three on Burgess. So you got four with Battier, three on Burgess. Poor job defensively by Burgess in terms of defensive positioning. Got to beat him to the basketball. Let me ask you a question, Dick. How does Mike sit so totally composed on the bench in a ball game like this? He's got Batty on the bench with four. Burgess just picks up his third. He's still cool, calm, and collected. That's his personality, though. He keeps it within himself. You know, maybe it's that West Point training down there at the academy. Must be poised. Remember, Mike Krzyzewski was a cadet, played for Bob Knight. As Really a staff that I, I love for the fact that they have such pride in the Duke uniform. Quinn Snyder, Johnny Dawkins. Morris tipped the ball back out. David Henderson also on that staff. All three played vital roles in the success of Duke basketball. Stokes call for travel. Stokes came out of Simon Grant's high school. Coach Ellaby produces at school has produced people like Rasheed Wallace. The key to play that Temple. For Duke, number 14, Nate James for Chris Purchase. Over the smaller lineup right now, they're going with a little bit more quickness, bringing James in for Purchase. Morris has a size advantage on James on the offensive end. We can look for Morris to try to post him inside. Morris is called for the foul. 
it looked as though that Duke had thrown one too many passes. What's happening right now with both these teams, they're both doing an excellent job getting back defensively in transition, and they're not doing a good job executing in their half-court offense. Third foul on Morris. Brand against Dekeezy. Those are two very big bodies, and Brand will knock it down. I just love the way he establishes position on the interior. And then has that little flair and that little bounce to his game. Knows how to complete the play down in the post. He's got a dozen. Langdon now matched up with Profit. You get worn out defensively guarding these Maryland players. I think that affects you on the offensive end. Great anticipation by Avery to come away with the steal. Takes it the distance, misses, and on the follow, the foul is going to be called on Francis. Avery with a good change in direction, freedom to the basket. Brand now inside. Look at him sitting in the post. He says, Give me the rock inside. Give me the rock. Can't handle me, I'll be there. Can't handle me there. Oh, those paws and that soft touch. And now here's Avery. Watch the change of direction. There's the little front change. Hello. Takes it to the goal. It's the contact. Avery and Langdon have really formed, I think, the premier backcourt in America. Another super backcourt go down to Ohio State. Michael Wolf got 30 yesterday in the South against Wisconsin. And Scooty Penn has given Ohio State a solid point guard play. They've won 12 games this year. Buckeyes. Francis with three fouls. And Lonnie Baxter checks into the lineup. Morris will go to the bench. Good hand for Morris and also good hand for Baxter, who, uh, as we talked at halftime, had an impact on that first 20 minutes. Well, you go for strength versus quickness now. You replace Morris and you bring in Baxter. Remember this game, if it's real tight going to the last four minutes, think about Duke's ability to shoot free throws. No question about it. And Maryland's done a great job keeping them off that free throw line. Good pass to Baxter inside, can't get it, and then he knocked it out of bounds. Three-point arsenal so lethal in the Duke offensive efficiency. Helps them average 95 a game. They have only one for five from the three. Oh, look at the contact right there. Look at the contact. You, you can call fouls all day long, baby, inside. And that's Baxter. Maybe some five fouls inside. Another player they can rotate in. They feel next year his increased PT playing time is going to really help him. There's Langdon laying the screen and he gets nailed to the deck. You got to be a brave guy going to lay a screen on that guy. Well, what we've seen in just the last 15 seconds here for people sitting at home, if you want to know how physical this game wow. is, and it's getting more so as we go on here in the second half. Both these coaches really promote the idea of being competitive and don't back down. He's aiming with a nice look. <laughs> James with the offensive rebound. Nate James right here from Maryland. 8-0 run by Duke. 47-39. And a quiet run, Ron. A very quiet run. Chris Carroll is guilty of the foul. Is he worn out after a game? I'm he telling you. He can't make the old GQ team. He's worn out. His clothes are all sweaty. He must ruin so many suits. 15-51 left of the ball game. 47-39 Duke. Nine Maryland, 47 Duke. 15:55 left of the ball game. And tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, ABC Sports presents the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. T. Martin and Company trying to knock off the Florida State Seminoles. So tomorrow, ABC Sports at ESPN.com bring you the first ever enhanced TV during the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Don't miss it. I'm heading out there as soon as this game is over. Dick to do radio on that with Mike Gottfried and Adrian Karsten. Say hello to all those guys. Mike does a great job, and you, I know, did a phenomenal job all year at ESPN on TV in football. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. What about a salute in football to the Big Ten? Purdue, Ohio State, yes. Penn State, Michigan, and Wisconsin. A salute. They got a certain star for that performance. Well, did he get the charge? Yes, he did. Really sloppy play offensively. Duke does a good job, though, getting the defensive play established to get the charge. 
They're getting there to leave very methodically right now. It's not really boom, boom with a three, a half-court trap. And this is an area where Langdon can get some open looks. Oh, White right there. Nobody. James, ooh, and he misses. I think they, James, thought you'd get a few more points with a degree of difficulty <laughs> rather than just lay that sucker in. Instead, he got Zippo out of that series. So the crowd asking Maryland to come back with an answer. Well, Duke is really quiet in this crowd. It was so alive early. Blocked by James. He has had quite an impact in the last few minutes. Carowell at the other end. And that's what they do exceptionally well. To convert from the defensive end to the offensive end. 20 second timeout by Gary Williams. The Terrapins. I'll tell you one thing about Trajan Langdon. He has really now become much more of a leader than early in his career. So it's a 10 point margin, 49 to 39. Watch the block. Well, here's the block shot by James. Super job by James. But look at the way they fill lanes. They really get out in transition. There's James rotating over. And now they're going to fill lanes. Looking for the open man running a 45 degree angle cut. 10 zip in the last three minutes, Ron. Now, this happened a couple of times in the first half, and Maryland came back and had an answer. But now we're getting to a point in the ball game where can't wait too long. I well, can't now, let it get out of reach. Uh, Francis or a prophet have to step up big now. You need your big playmakers to come up big. Carroll matched up by Francis on the perimeter. Come on, throw to me. McKeezy fell on the in line, and now he had a charge a moment ago and then a turnover right there. This is a big trip here. Ron, I've often said the easiest guy to guard is a guy that is stationary. Steve Francis has a tendency when the ball's not in his hands to play in a very stationary way. He has to become more active offensively without the ball. There's the trifecta that'll hurt you. That's Duke's arsenal, baby. You know what's interesting? That is the second turnover or bad play by Maryland out of a timeout. That drives a coach nuts, doesn't it? Makes you lose your hair. Sends you to the sideline. Makes you become a TV announcer. You get fired. You get the Ziggy. Well, this is the largest lead of the afternoon for Duke, 52-39. Stevie's got to learn, and that'll come with game experience, how to be active without the ball. If you stand, you're so easy to defend. Carwell really muscling up on him. Good, I think a good adjustment making Carwell the guy assigned to check Steve Francis. And James also again, I repeat, he knocked that one out of bounds. Has he's, been very effective both ends of the floor this half. Yeah, he's had so many injuries early in his career. Broken thumbs, wrist problems. A lot of people thought he would transfer it and be unhappy with his playing time. But he loves Duke and has stayed and has become now an important contributor off the bench. Shot clock is at eight, now at seven. See, here's where he excels, with the ball in his hands. You got it, you got it, mate. You hear the talk inside, I got it, you got it, and the profit is fouled. And because Brand was battling with Nate James, they lost the handle. Good effort by Prophet, though, really attacking the basket on the offensive glass. Steve Francis, like so many players who make the transition from junior college to the collegiate level, have to learn the art of playing without the basketball. Steve Francis, without question, is an All-American and a super player. Langdon, the foul is on him. It's his second, fifth team foul on Duke. I'll be down at Duke Wednesday night. Cameron, you talk about a place live. Have you ever done a game down at Cameron Indoor Stadium? No. You have to. I know you've touched every base practically in America with football and basketball. You have to once feel the electricity there, Ron. It is so unique and so special. Been over there for practice a couple of times, but have never been there for a game. Students are right on top of the floor. It's live here, too. Cole's a special place. McGetty, in fact, the, the crazies have given him a, what is it? Uh-oh, Spook. Uh -oh, McGetty. Uh -oh. Yes, there is. If you let him get that look, if you trap and give him the good look, he'll nail it all night long. As Lionel Richie would say, all night long, baby. Two of three for him from outside the arc. 55-41. Francis lost the handle, and he was fouled. And it looks as though McGetty is the man that uh, Ted Valentine is going to call. I nope. think when you look at the game plan, as you're going to watch the reverse ball, 
See Langdon right now gets the ball reversed to him, and there it is, the open look. He's just a sweet shooter. He's got that velvet touch. Langdon was charged with the foul, so he now has three. Mike's decided to leave him on the floor. The one area where Duke has excelled today is not allowing Maryland to get in transition. Against anyone that they can run up and down the floor, they'll just dominate. They have such an explosive transition game. Kentucky played a brilliant game. Probably played its best game all year against Maryland down at Rupp Arena. Put on an unbelievable performance offensively and defensively. That's Dixon reaching in. 16 fouls now on Maryland. And on Dixon, his second. Maryland won that tournament out of Puerto Rico where they put the hurt on UCLA. Also Maryland threw away five, Pittsburgh after Dixon. Pittsburgh had beaten second. Kentucky. As that kick out. Getty still open the afternoon. Gary was talking to Lenny Elmore about that at halftime. How they have to make the adjustment to stop the little penetration in that kick out that they like to utilize. No one in this building will outwork. Now, one Maryland player or a fan will outwork Gary Williams on that sideline. Nope. <laughs> Debbie Yawra rewarded him this year, the AD, with a seven-year extension. Maybe I'll loan you and I some money. Oh, nice pass inside. I had to the look. Made a good cut without the ball. Been delivered on time. Miller couldn't hang on. Miller's a dangerous threat for the three. Look at Brandon, and he is battled and he's fouled. Brand from Martisic. Yeah, Martis has been quiet. He had a great game here last year against North Carolina. Sparked him to an unbelievable W. Was brilliant off the bench. Maybe uncanny way of getting the shot off. Well, they called it on Miller. You can see the reach in. So with the 12-51 mark, one and one for Duke. And it's what Nick Vitale said. This, you didn't want this to happen, particularly this early in the half. Fran from out of New York, Peaceville, New York, played on a fame day AU team out there with Ron Artest, who's having a superb year for Mike Jarvis. Artest, to me, is the most unselfish superstar in college basketball. St. John's making a lot of noise early. There we had a lane violation. Francis, Francis is saying, I was pushed in by McGetty. But, uh... Ted Valentine says, I'm not buying that. Yeah, you don't want to give away points right now either. You don't want to give away points. I don't know. He came in on his own look to me. Brand misses it, and Duke gets the rebound in a new 35 seconds. 56 to 42. See you on one break here. This is where they excel in the open court. Francis misses. And the block inside, McGetty got up and sent it back into row 304. I'll tell you one thing, Ron, the defensive effort of Duke has been outstanding. There he hustled back on a defensive effort. Look at Corey McGetty up there. He's got great legs from out of Fenwick High School. Profit, unthinkable. Missed the lob, he was there. He had gotten in behind him. And now, all of a sudden, this A's beginning to get away from Maryland. Now they're going to start trapping, and that becomes susceptible to open shots. Brand lost it out of bounds. Execution, execution, execution. So important in a half-court game. There's the lob. They try to throw it a diagonal. He's got to convert that. Profit is 3 of 11. And Dixon has just been whistled for a foul by Carl Hess. Dixon now with three. Starting a little frazzled on the inside run right now. Getting a little frustrated, Maryland. Don't want to put Duke on that line. They'll convert on that line. 
75% as a team, one of the best in America. The 90 team they had shot 76% for the best ever in Duke history. That team went to the final game and got beat by UNLV in a blowout. 83% is what the man at the line is. And then Duke came back the following year, number 91, and they beat UNLV in an unbelievable game in the semifinals, and then went on to win the national title. They went back to back in 91 and 92. Gets the second one to go. Dick, here's an incredible number. In the second half, Maryland only has one field goal. Everything else is from the free throw line. And it's one of ten. That's been the game plan of Duke. Defensively can help to one another. Force them to play a half-court game. They really don't excel in a half-court game. They dominate in that offensive transition. But against good clubs, they're going to have to really perform a lot better in a five-on-five -five situation. So there's a break in the action. 58 to 42, Duke with 12 minutes even left in our ball game. 58 to 42, some of the uh, Maryland fans a little uh, frustrated right now. But what's happened here, they came in so alive and it was so fired up early before the game. They got great fans down here in Maryland, but the bottom line is the team's got to help. You look here at the summary, and that tells the story. One for ten, seven turnovers, not getting it done offensively. The other thing, Dick, they don't have one steal in the second half. They only had three in the first half. They're averaging 14 and a half a ball game. See, they're going to dominate perimeter players, but they can't dominate the guards that do. McGetty, and that ball is blocked as Morris got up and got a big mid on it. Or the pair of number 12. And Morris will score it. Second field goal at the second half for Maryland. That's an example of them kicking the ball out, getting in transition. That they do well. They get an A plus now. Now they're going to go to traps. If you post up to the middle of the floor, you'll find open people against that trap. Spread the court. Mike Krzyzewski does an amazing job of putting his people in the right places on the floor. On that play, you could see that Langdon, not wanting to pick up his fourth foul, he had to, rather than penetrate, he had to kind of stay flat-footed and put the shot up. Francis, catch to the middle, not there. Shot selection so important in trying to hold on to this lead, take good shots. They posted this brand inside, it was wide open. So many good things happen when the ball goes inside to the big fella. He just punished Kentucky down in the baseline. Now, Francis trying to move here without the basketball, not a bad curl move. And then you slam snow off the glass, got a little bit out of control up in the air, but he did a good job there of getting a free throw shot by coming off that curl. Kesey just picked up his third, so he was void of fouls in the first half, and all of a sudden it's jumping in on him. We have 10.48 to play. You made a great point, Ron, a little bit earlier about the number of steals because that really reflects the personality of Maryland's team defensively. When they're attacking, forcing steals, and Profit wanted a key catalyst in usually doing that, they dominate people. But against Duke, the way they spread the court, the way they're coached, and do such an excellent job with good personnel, they don't get that many opportunities in terms of forcing the steal and the turnover. We're in now with 15 points and seven rebounds. He just really gives you such a special presence inside. And when you can blend that with good perimeter plays, as well with Avery and Langdon, who have a combined 74 threes coming into this game, you have a chance to win. Well, he's also got three blocks. Gets the outlet pass to James, and Akizi just picked up his fourth foul. Yeah, quickly, all of a sudden. I get a kick sometimes. You know, I get these TV critics sometimes. They get on my case. They say, you're always praising guys like Krzyzewski and these coaches as you watch them kick the ball out. Well, let me ask you this. You watch a game here, Ron, as you see the contact. How could you not praise? I guess maybe I'm guilty. Sure, I sing the praises of the coaches. But the bottom line is the games I usually do always feature the best coaches in America. I mean, if I, these guys go to the Hall of Fame, I'm going to the Hall of Shame. How can I not praise them?
James, a 79% free throw shooter, has that one in and out. He has to feel good about his play so far today, especially coming here to Maryland where they recruited him so heavily. Maryland's got some blue chip recruits coming in next year. Maj Holden, a 6'9 player there in Prestwood from out of New Jersey. Steve Blake, who I met here tonight, Oak Hill Academy, so with his dad. He's not worried about next year, though. He's worried about this year. Yeah, this is the biggest lead in the afternoon, Dick. It's a 17-point ball game. And it's been done with defense, defense, and defense. Are you right? Are you ever right? Akizi on the bench with four, all in his hand. Quick turnaround by Morris, and he was fouled. And let's see. They're going to call it on Brand or James. They're going to call it on James. I can already see some of the scribes banging their typewriters talking about the fact that three more key games, if Maryland continues to go on a losing side in this game, they'll come up empty twice, talking about Kentucky and about Duke. But remember, these are some blue chip basketball teams. Maryland's went to the Sweet 16 three of the last five years, and five years in a row, there are only 11 teams that have done this, and only two from the ACC been to the NCAA, and that includes North Carolina and Maryland who've been there five consecutive years for the big dance. Last year lost to Arizona out in the West in the Sweet 16. Got a good look at Battier on the bench and to think that Duke is doing in this without him. Graham. He had to put poise to bring the ball back down and try to regroup himself and get that explosiveness to the basket. James misses the layup. Tough layup. He's going to try to utilize his left hand. He anticipates the block. Rand tries to regroup and take it up, and there's the contact. Miller with the foul, his third. And now the double bonus for the rest of the way by Duke. That is danger time. They're not really shooting exceptionally well today on that line. You know, Bentley twice there, 74% shooter. 16 of 23 for Duke as a team this afternoon. Still not bad. About to go under 10 minutes left in our ball game. with the dish and too hard and the tip inside Morris. Morris out athletic on the interior offensive Harris rebound. Morris. That's a turnover. That's a turnover. This crowd is just dying to get in the game. They're well, saying they just give us one spurt so we can explode and raise the roof. Mike Krzyzewski up. And a grimace from him and his team. But come on now, don't let him have another spurt right here. 13-point Duke lead with nine and a half minutes to go. Becoming a commander-in-chief on that sideline. Boys, patient. He gets a lot of his work done in practice. That's or where he really is so volatile in a, in a very positive way. But he's really such a teacher on a practice situation. 18 turnovers against Maryland. 10 total for Duke. Only two in this half. And he had a four with four fouls, Ron. He went out at the 1857 mark. And Miller has gone down. He turned his ankle badly. Hobbling to the other end. Let's see if they get a stoppage in play for him. They're going to get profit in the game for him. And they're going to call him for a travel. And I mean, Gary Williams is livid. Such an intense competitor. He and Gene Cady are probably the most volatile, intense competitors who demonstrated all throughout the entire game. Miller, meanwhile, hobbles to the bench. Profit comes in for him. But Danny turns his ankle. I think he stepped on a teammate's foot at the defensive end of the floor. And he had trouble getting up out of the lane. Yeah, he couldn't get up and down the floor and transition. See how they spread the court, make it very difficult for you to trap him. Gray. 
Elton Brand open on the interior. As soon as you spread the court, you see some traps, you're going to get a lot of isolation for open people. Brand has 17 points, and he has a block. And on the return, Baxter scores it. Good effort by Baxter to go after the second time after Brand got a piece of the rock. You gotta read those screens against Duke. You gotta communicate on the defensive end. Battier left alone. Coaching so important in the situation. Duke really excelling a little bit more than Maryland in a half court game. And there's Moran with the dunk on the interior. If he gets shots, it's over. If you give this kid any kind of look at the goal, that's why he's going to make somebody's NBA roster. Doesn't have super athletic ability or superb quickness, but there is no substitute for a guy that can shoot the rock the way he can. Nice hustle to the hoop. Nice. Got it and a three-point play in the making here. Nice clear out for Stokes. A little isolation. Nice clear out by Gary's glove. He works diligently on patterns in a half-court game, but the bottom line is his team many of the time doesn't have to utilize it because they blow people away. You take a look at their last three wins, blowing the South Carolina States and the North Texas and the Princeton. Terrapin foul on number 12, Terrell Stokes. That's why Gary's living around. He could have had a three-point attempt down there. Well, see, I was looking because Batty is a man who's taken the charge. Either that or it's five on him. Batty Yeh really does a phenomenal job in taking charges. One of the best in America. Led Duke in taking charges last year. So they count the hoop. But they call it on Stokes, as Dick said. Well, a lot of people say in college basketball, that's that old makeup call. We'll give you the deuce on the other end, we'll shoot it on the other side. After you release the ball, they said it was contact. 7.59 left to play. 66-52 Duke. Duke with a 14-point margin. Don't forget tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, ABC Sports presents the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Sun Devil Stadium at Tempe, Arizona. Tennessee taking on number two, Florida State. And tomorrow, ABC Sports at ESPN.com bring you the first ever enhanced TV during the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Don't miss it. Hi, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson right here. Mr. Francis has one point and zero assists in the last 16.30. Well, he's got 11 points on the afternoon. But as we were talking during the timeout, your star players got to step up big in games like this. Well, star players got to be special playmakers. They got to make the big plays. LeBron Profits three for 11, and Francis one point in the last 16 is not going to get it done against a quality team like Duke. You have to take your game to the next level. I really believe that with Francis, it's just a matter of game experience, understanding the flow of the game. Grand muscles away with the rebound for Duke. Execution. Watch Duke execute by good spacing. They start in a 1-2-2 two, two set, a little stack. Langdon on the move. Are you serious? Are you serious the way he knocked down that three? I mean, that's unbelievable. I mean, what a way of shooting the rock. Wow. Three of four from three-point range for him. Brand, by the way, is one rebound away from having double-double today. Simple curl move. Oh. Carwell. Methodically, everybody contributed. Everybody stepping up. Carrowell in his own little way on a defensive end. Avery handling the basketball. Langdon making open shots. Brand in the post presence and Battier defensively. Carrowell has six rebounds. The average is 2.7. That shot's going to be short. Hit last by Morris, though. Watch Langdon with that little curl move. Look at this. Doesn't waste time. Catches it, squares his body. Look at the great release, the follow through, the rotation, the backspin. The Alaskan Assassin, NBA up to the nylon. 17-point Duke lead. Six minutes, 50 seconds left to play. You making a believer out of you, Ron? No, oh, there. <laughs> you know, the thing about it is, Maryland is <laughs> outstanding basketball. Exactly. Maryland, without question to me, is one of the top five in the nation. 
This is where he's at his best. I step and slide in the glide. In. There it is. There. There's the transition game again, Ron. If they're allowed to do that, they'll blow you away. But unfortunately, Duke says, we're not going to allow you to do that. You're going to play us in a 40-foot game as well. Parallel. Look at Carrollwell. That's seven rebounds for him. And that was knocked out of bounds by Baxter. Carrollwell's a warrior. He's just a warrior. This comes to play a Rambo man. Coach K said he really feels special about this team. They're very coachable. Kids that really want to learn. Easy back in the game playing with four fouls. And Langdon, well, they left him alone and he missed that one. Stepped a little bit out of his range right there, and that little curl move. Fifteen feet apart, excellent spacing. Two, three set now, foul line extended, trying to take some time off the clock. Manage the clock, so essential down the stretch of the game. Shot clock is now at 10. And Francis gets the steal. Francis right there made the great defensive play and created the turnover and it should be his ball. But they're saying it's going to alternate possession. 20-second timeout is called, and Gary is all the way out to the middle of the court. They're demonstrating a lot of patience by not pulling the team with him getting out of the coach's box. But I give the refs credit there. They know it's a very emotional game. And he's not trying to berate anyone. He's just basically trying to share his little opinion about why it should be Maryland basketball. And he's not inviting them to dinner right there. He's like, come on, Ted, there's some great places I can take you out to dinner down here. Crab cakes. <laughs> a little crab cake time. Harry's not going to be in the mood to eat some crab cakes tonight. Had a visit with Billy Hahn this morning, his longtime assistant who's been with him for 10 years. He uh, is as good as there is around at breaking down video. And we talked about what they had to do today. And he just he made the same point that Gary did. He said, Duke has been in this kind of game so many more times than our kids, and we're not a young basketball team. But the fact that Mike, the Blue Devils, have been there, it's, it's such a big deal. Well, we talked about that earlier in the telecast, how the edge would have to go to Duke and their players playing in so many big games yeah. versus kids like when you take, for example, Morris's and certainly Steve Francis just making a transition out of junior college. There's a special feel that goes into playing these kind of games if I hit the face. Accidental, going for the basketball. Looks like caught him in the eye. Peter Francis really trying to get his team pumped up. Has a finger right to the eye as he goes for the basketball. Chris Carrawell, one of those unsung heroes you don't read about. There'll be no story about him tomorrow. You're right. But in the box score, the one guy that he's a hero for is a guy called Coach K. You hate to use the term because it's so overworked, but the only term to use is blue collar. I mean, exactly. that's, you know, quiet but extremely efficient. And I, it's unofficial, but the last time I think we had him for like seven rebounds besides what he has done offensively. And also defensively when he yeah. rotated him on to play Francis was he looked. Milan Profit again has to really live with that enigma of not coming up with the big performance in the mega game. And he's such a talented player. I think he puts a lot of pressure on himself in these big games. He doesn't tend to relax and just come out and play. He's got ability. Glenn Elmore, let's check with you. What do you got for us? 
Well, you take a sampling of the crowd here, and they seem to rise and fall with the success or the failure of Steve Francis. In the last couple of minutes, he's been able to get more involved, getting other people involved in the offense, and still not taking all of it on his shoulders. But as soon as he gets his hands on the ball, you can feel that buzz of anticipation that he's going to do something great. Unfortunately, thus far for these fans, it hasn't been enough. Back to you, Ron. Okay, Lynn, you know, it's not to to beat up the point, but uh, also the fact that you do have to learn the intensity and the level that you have to play in a game like this, be it at home or be it on the road. And uh, he is learning baptism under fire. He will be such a much more complete player at the end of the year than he is now. Going through the ACC, competition away from home. Little jump stop. See, that's one area of his game he never had in the past. He's added the ability to get to the basket. Taken away. Landon goes on the floor for it, and it's going to be Duke basketball. Regardless of the score here today, and I said it earlier in the radio show that I did today with Gary Williams, I really firmly believe that these are two of the five best teams in America, no matter what happens here. I think when you put Maryland against most of the clubs in the nation, they are certainly going to have a great shot to get to the winner's circle. Morris gets the turnover. You can see the note there. NASCAR coming up next. You'll see it from the beginning of the race. And they get the turnover from Maryland, and James is fouled by Stokes. James really does a good job sneaking out in transition. I think some other clubs you got to watch. I think they're going to get better and better. As Mateen Cleaves becomes a little better at the point guard slot, Michigan State, a very dangerous team, very athletic. Had a good win yesterday over Louisville. Also Stanford to me, because they'll force you to play half-court basketball, is going to be a team to reckon with in the postseason. And UCLA starting to get a healthy Baron Davis and had a nice win yesterday over Arizona. I want to come with you. Can I, go to, can I be your stag guy down there at the Fiesta Bowl? I want to come down there and watch that matchup. Great football game. And I think, Who do you like in that game, I, Ron? I never pick a, a game and one that I'm doing, but I'll tell you this. I think they are so closely matched that it'll come down to special teams. And I think in the kicking game, Florida State definitely has an end. Florida State, the Seminoles, to me, are going to be tough to beat with that defense. Plus the fact Francis off the mark with a three-pointer. When you look at Bobby Bowden's record, when he has more than two weeks to prepare for a football game, it's absolutely incredible. There's only one loss. It's unfortunately, they lost his quarterback early this year. The kid Martin's done a phenomenal job for Tennessee, though. Everybody's been waiting for T. Martin to fold, and it just hasn't happened. He is outstanding. Yeah, people are waiting for Duke to fold here, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not they just happen keep either. executing, moving well without the ball. The players just understand their roles. Everybody knows their role on the floor. Avery kisses it off the glass just before the shot clock went off. Now, is that managing the clock? Is that what we oh, call yeah, about? Avery. Management of time. Poor Bobby Kremitz has got to bring his rambling wreck at Georgia Tech Wednesday night into that Duke Cameron Indoor Stadium. We'll be down there, and that place will be the rocking. See you there, Duke. He's coming home. 20-point lead will go away for a minute. Right back. Back to Cole Fieldhouse. 20-point Duke lead with 3.36 left in the ballgame. The NASCAR Winter Heat coming up next. And uh, don't be discouraged that you're going to miss something because they're holding up the race. We're going to see it flag to flag in Tucson, Arizona, immediately following our game. I'll tell you, Ron, an impressive performance defensively by Duke. To be plus 20 on his team with the talent that Maryland has, I know it has to be frustration galore out of Gary Williams, who's he and his staff worked so hard in preparing for this game. Taking time off the clock. He likes to run that 2-3 high. Try to get some backdoor cuts out of it, some dribble penetration. There's the layup. Great execution. And right it took 29 seconds off the clock. Right into the lane, take time off the clock, as you just said, and then get the high percentage shot. A key. Oh, rebound. Oh. And the tip wouldn't go as well. Dick, would, uh, would you rank this 
Duke team number one? Absolutely. I think Connecticut, my magazine, I call pre-conference number one, pre-season the number one team in America. But looking at the quality teams that Duke has been able to beat, beating the likes of Kentucky on a neutral floor, coming on a road and blowing Maryland away here in the second half, not to take anything away from Connecticut. They're superb. They're certainly one of America's premier clubs. But I would simply say that this is the best team in the United States, despite their loss to Cincinnati earlier this year. This is a 39 to 15 run. Everything goes at the current moment. And Connecticut had a very impressive blowout yesterday over Georgetown. But I just absolutely think, to me, this team is so special when I look at Duke. Morris jams at home, and a timeout is called by Maryland with 1.53 showing on the clock. I would love to see Cincinnati in person, Ron. I have not seen them. And obviously, they're a very good basketball team. Just the fact that they can beat Duke. And I'll tell you what impressed me the most with them that they had a 19-point lead, and with a 19-point lead, Duke caught them with 15 minutes to go, yet they were able to win the game. We'll take another break. Right back. Get ready to... Duke 78 to 56. NASCAR winner heat coming up next. You'll see the race in its entirety from Tucson, Arizona. Final timeout for Maryland. Zakeezy cuts across the lane, knocks down an eight-footer. Oh, a nice little jump shot from the interior. And a timeout is called by Duke. And it's going to be a 20. Gives us an opportunity also to mention that uh, I thought he was credited with it just a moment ago, but Elton Brand, double-double for him today. Ten rebounds. He's got 19 points. Again, it's that thing of consistency. Reminding you, NASCAR winner he is next. I think, Ron, what happens when, able, when he's able to really dominate inside and he's going to dominate against most people, it just spreads the court and spreads the wealth for everyone else on the floor. You know, the interesting thing about Brand, when you look at him, he is a 6'8", 240. But I think he plays bigger than that just because he is so doggone strong, but yet he has wonderful touch. He's got long, long arms. He's got that attitude that's really a kid. Also epitomizes what the NCAA manual says, student athlete. Brilliant student over at Peak Skill, New York, before he came to do. Walking violation. See, the one thing, it's very difficult for Gary Williams to emulate this kind of intensity and emotion in trying to work on your execution of your half-court game. I mean, he does it every day in practice, but in practice, it's not the same as an environment like a Kentucky game and a Duke game. And his players have to really understand and learn the importance of half-court execution because they dominate so many people with their pressure and their transition ability. And you know, Dick, we need to say for people who joined us late in the second half, this game was tied at 37 apiece at halftime. And, and now you look up at the scoreboard, it is 78 to 60. And it was that methodical job by Duke. It wasn't explosiveness, very methodical early in the second half and coming out defensively. defensively establishing really superiority on the defensive end. Kentucky, speaking about them, had a lot yesterday over a good young Florida team that I really feel is going to get better and better, especially next year. I think the Gators will be special. Look at this guy. Looks like he's been in a fight. Looks like he's been in a fight. Tell you what, that thing really has swollen up wow. in a short period of time. That's uh, Chris Carrollwell, if you just joined us. He got, it was uh, unintentional, but uh, got scratched in the eye about five plain minutes ago. He may have some vision problems there for uh, for a bit until that swelling goes down. Francis is called for the foul. Well, you talk about medical help, though. You don't get too many fighters than what they have at the Duke uh, Medical Center. You know, it's really a great gesture. Talk a little bit about these coaches, too. Mike Krzyzewski so involved on a board of directors with the Jimmy V Foundation. Gary Williams tells me before the game that he's going to have a little outing to raise thousands of dollars for Jimmy V. People don't understand some of the charity work these people do. And, all I can simply say is I know these two guys were great friends with Jimmy V. I got his tie on today, a V collection tie, a Brett Favre special. I didn't even wear my own. I wore a Brett Favre one today. You can buy those at all the retail shops out there. And all the money goes to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Well, Baxter, after the pass is knocked away, reaches down to the floor, takes it back up. See, here's where they dominate people usually. Go to the full court traps, force turnovers and steals. 
but you're not going to do it against quality clubs like Duke or Connecticut or teams like Kentucky. So that's why you have to really work on that half-court game. That's got to become a vital part of your offensive ammunition. That's going to be a foul on Baxter. And today, really, Francis and Laurent Prophet did not give them a super performance. And there's no way, and we talked about it earlier on the show, that you're going to beat somebody like Duke unless their big people step up and make a positive, positive statement. Prophet with, uh, with eight points. Francis with 11 points. Duke has really dominated the last three meetings. We think of last year beating them by 32 over here on this floor and then beating them by 27 at Duke and coming here into Maryland today with a little surprise with a 20-point lead. Francis only one second-half point. Wow. Under a minute, 40, now 39. The Duke Blue Devils are about to pick up their 13th win. Maryland already is at 13, and they'll go to 13 and 2. And I have to agree with Dick Vitale. I'm still not going to be surprised if when I fly into St. Pete at the end of March that this Maryland team might be there as exactly. well. Exactly. There's one positive for Maryland here. It's certainly the first half. He's got a charge by James. And also the performance of Baxter. Baxter's given him some positive minutes. Cincinnati's got to find a way to get a little bit more offense. Peter Michael, their fine players, never lost a game. He's got 72 and all in college, junior college, and right now undefeated at Cincinnati. Win, win, win. And he was a muscle man against Duke. Bounces off the mark. A couple of unsungs for Duke this afternoon. Carowell, who's on the bench with that injury to his eye. Battier, James Battier. The guys you read about are Brandon, Langdon, Avery, but those guys you mentioned are such solid contributors, Ron Franklin. So this one is history. The and Duke the final Duke. score, the Duke Blue Devils, 82, and Maryland, 64. Coming up next, NASCAR Winter Heat from Tucson, Arizona. And as Dick mentioned, some unsung heroes today, but Langdon, Battier, Carowell, Elvin Brand, a double-double. What an outstanding effort by Duke as they knock off the number four team in the nation. 82-64, the final. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale, Ron Franklin, say so long, everybody, from Maryland.